Josh, did you want to do the introductions? Sure. Thank you so much for Julia for for kicking over that. Um, here we are living in. in in Zoom world and definitely dealing with our, our technical issues. But um, thank you so much everyone for joining us today for, for this wonderful um, housing and dining webinar. Gonna go over some great information today. Uh, just to briefly you know, introduce myself, my name is Josh Mickelson. I work in the admissions office um, and uh, we're gonna hear from both our, our housing and, and dining groups and then leave some time at the end for uh, Q and A. So without further ado, uh, thank you everyone um, for, for joining us and, and I'll pass it over to uh, Julia and um, she can go ahead and get us started. Sure. Hi everyone, my name is Julia Bluff and the Marketing Coordinator for University Housing. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I was just gonna, I'm joined by some, uh, some colleagues both in housing and in dining and of course also in admissions. Uh, just to answer any questions that you might have about university housing and dining um, and the experience living here on campus. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, but if you have any questions um, while the presentation is going on, feel free to drop them into the Q&A. There's some folks who are standing by to answer those questions if I don't get to them during the presentation or if anyone doesn't get to their portion during the, that question during the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I like to just start with just like a little overview of university housing at a glance. On a normal year, we have about 8,000 residents that live here on campus out of about a total matriculating population of around 20,000 students. Um, on in our communities, we have about 20, uh, 20 plus residential learning communities. That's for first years continuing students and for transfers and grad students. So 20 plus residential learning communities um, for those student populations. And I'll talk more about residential learning communities in just a moment. Uh, our first year students typically live in residence halls. That's dormitory style living. We have five different styles of residence halls here on campus. We also have two apartment communities here on campus. And those are generally for transfer students and continuing students, so second year students and above. And we sometimes do use our apartment um, complexes for first year overflow if um, we have a particularly large incoming first year class or if we have any public health restrictions. Um, so this year we have some first year students that are living in, in apartments, but we may not have them next year. And then also on campus, we have lots of different supporting services um, for our residents, including two package centers on campus so you can get your mail. Um, right next to near your housing community, we have markets and eateries and our campus dining folks are gonna tell you all about those. Uh, here in um, housing, we also have um, about 200 plus student staff. Uh, those are RAs, resident advisors and um, desk assistants, um, housing ambassadors who typically give tours around camp uh, on, uh, through um, campus housing on a normal year. And they're all there to help support our residents in addition to our uh, professional staff who uh, sometimes live at, uh, on campus and definitely work here on campus as well. Um, so you have 24 seven support when you're here on campus as a resident. So how do you apply? Um, the application process is pretty easy for our first year students. Our first years are required to live on campus. Um, the application opens Thursday, April 8th in your housing portal. You can access it through your Cal Poly portal. Um, as a quick note, the application appears in your portal 24 to 48 hours after you accept admittance to Cal Poly um, on or after April 8th. So both of those two things have to happen. April 8th is when we open and you have to have accepted your, um, your offer from Cal Poly in order to fill out a housing application. And once you fill out that application, you can secure housing, edit your application, add roommate groups, um, and edit your, your application by May 7th. So that's a deadline to keep in mind, but you can go back into your application anytime um, after you apply and through May 7th um, to, to change your application preferences, to um, add or change to your roommate group as well. Um, in your application, you also make an initial payment that goes towards your first month of fees for housing. And then um, our students are assigned rooms and communities, um, usually in about early August. That's when you'd be looking out for your room assignment here on campus. Transfer students, um, it's a pretty similar process. It's also April 8th for you all. Transfer students aren't required to live on campus. Um, so it's optional for transfer students. We do have limited number of spaces for transfer students. So if it's your first option, your first choice is to live on campus. I always recommend that you get your name in early for those spaces. University housing does have a two-year housing program for some students here on campus. Um, so for folks who are enrolled in fall 2021, um, the following folks are required to live on campus for their first two years. So their first year and their second year. 
Um, this doesn't apply to transfer students because they're already past those first two years, but these are the, the students that do have a two-year housing program. Students with the College of Architecture and Environmental Design, or CAED, College of Agriculture, sorry, Agriculture, Food and Environmental Sciences, or CAFES, College of Engineering, the Cal Poly Scholars Program, which is a fabulous academic program we have here on campus. They have their own residential learning community. And then student athletes are also required to live on campus for their first year and their second year. So I mentioned residential learning communities, and here's a little bit more about those. So residential learning communities are how we organize all of our housing here at Cal Poly. So when you come to Cal Poly and you fill out an application, you don't request a specific um, residence hall or a specific building. Instead, you request a residential learning community. So those are ways that we group students together based off of a shared interest, a shared hobby, a shared academic program or focus. So you can live with other folks who um, have the same interest or academic focus as you. Um, also a culture and identity. Um, we also have some residential learning communities tied to those. So there are three basic types of residential learning communities. Um, college-based ones, so you can request to live with folks from your college. You have program-based ones. Uh, so depending on your academic uh, program that you're involved with, you may have a residential learning community for those. Um, the main ones are TRIO, EOP, Cal Poly Scholars. Those three have a residential learning community and folks that are a part of those um, academic programs are required to live in their residential communities and they pull their roommates into those communities as well. And then the honors, uh, the honors program also has um, a residential learning community. It is optional for folks in the honors program. And then we also have culture and identity based housing. So you can choose to live with someone who has a shared background or belief tradition as you do, um, including pride housing. So there's a full list of our residential learning communities for next year. Um, leadership is on there. So that's a good interest based one as well. Um, and substance free college based communities, culture and identity communities, Cal Poly Scholars, EOP, Honors, Pride, um, and TRIO. And where do first years typically live? Um, as I mentioned, our first years typically live in residence halls here on campus that is dormitory style living. We have five different distinct styles of residence halls here on campus. Uh, if you're following along on those pictures from um, my uh, left to right, we have Yosemite, North Mountain, South Mountain, which we also call the red bricks. And you can probably tell why from, from the picture. We have Yaki Tutu, um, and Yosemite. Yosemite and Sierra Madre are sister communities that look very, very similar. Um, and we call them the towers, sometimes as a shorthand that students use for those spaces. Um, wherever you're placed on campus, they have a pretty consistent level of amenity. So you get a pretty consistent um, experience no matter where you're placed on campus. And each of these specific um, residence hall styles does have pros and perks that are um, specific just to them and um, our RAs and other students can tell you a little bit about their experience living in particular residence halls, but across the line, some of the shared amenities, um, our, our communities have a mixture of doubles, triples, and quad rooms, um, depending on residence hall style. They're all fully furnished, so you don't need to bring any extra furniture with you. They have study and recreation spaces as well in those, um, in those buildings, as long as they're open, if, if public health conditions allow that. Um, we have a cleaning service for common spaces. Um, so any of the common spaces are cleaned by um, our custodial crew, although you are responsible for cleaning your own room. Um, all of our residents also have Spectrum U streaming TV. Uh, so it's like Netflix a little bit, uh, but it's just for our college uh, campus residents. So you have that automatically when you move in. There are community kitchens in every single residence hall style. There's mini fridges in every single room and laundry facilities are included for first years. And then on to transfer housing. Um, transfer housing um, is available in our campus apartments um, and they have residential learning communities as well. Um, it's a bit of a smaller list, but transfers, we like to house them together as much as we can. Uh, so you have the same academic focus as other folks in your program. And we do have cultural identity communities for our transfer students, a pride community, substance-free community, and of course the transfer program. And if you're a graduate student, we also have a grad program. Uh, so we like to house graduate students together as well. So transfers um, live in our campus apartments. And if you do stay on a second year as well, you would also be staying in campus apartments. We have two different styles of campus apartments, um, Poly Canyon Village and Sarah Vista. So two different communities, although they're very, very similar apartments on the inside. Um, most of our campus apartments are private rooms, although we have um, some shared room options in Poly Canyon Village. Um, and our campus apartments are shared. So they're four person, five person or six person apartments. So six person apartments are two shared rooms and two private rooms. But like I said, the vast majority of our campus apartments are private rooms and shared apartments. 
They have a full kitchen, a living room, two bathrooms. They are fully furnished as well. And um, there is a cleaning service as long as public health conditions allow for us to enter um, apartments next year uh, that cleans common spaces and restrooms. Uh, we don't clean student rooms though, so you are responsible for those. Laundry facilities are included. There's a community center for both of these spaces and a rec center and a pool in Poly Canyon Village that you can access. So we tend to get a lot of questions about occupancy. Um, and most of you might know that this year we have limited occupancy on campus um, because of the pandemic, of course. So all of our students are um, in private rooms this year. Um, next year, we're, we're, Cal Poly is very optimistic that we're gonna return to in-person classes for fall. And we anticipate offering doubles and triples in larger rooms. Um, however, what room types are offered are gonna be determined by public health conditions as fall 2021 grows near. So keep an eye out on your email and on our website for any announcements that housing might have about occupancy levels or what room types we're offer, uh, offering for fall um, and also what amenities we're, we can offer, um, things like access to common spaces and, and shared study rooms. And for your first year, especially your first year here on campus, it's a great opportunity to get involved in our campus community. Um, and there are so many ways to get involved when you're on campus. So we always urge our first year students, our new incoming students, our new transfer students to try to take a deep dive into your campus community. You can do that through housing. You can do that through the, the wider community as well. Oftentimes that, you know, the friends that you make here your first year here on campus, um, either in housing or in your academic programs or in clubs on campus, um, are friendships that'll follow you all throughout your years here at Cal Poly and potentially even beyond. And there are so many ways to get involved when you're here on campus. So they're virtual and in-person events within your, um, your housing residential learning community. So when you're in your residential learning community, for example, if you're in one of the college communities, you're gonna have a chance to participate in programming um, that is related to your, your college, for example. And all of the residential learnings offer that through RAs, for example, and then also just um, through partnerships with the programs. Um, and we also have three amazing faculty and residents here on, on campus. So they live in our student communities and part of their job is to be a bridge between academic life and residential life here on campus. And they host a lot of events too. Um, so you can get involved with the faculty that actually live within housing communities here on campus. And they have lots of fun events um, that you might be able to join uh, if you're interested. We also urge folks to, um, if you wanna get involved in your community, join Interhousing Council. It's our student government here on campus for housing. Um, so if you're really passionate about advocating for other students and for other residents, um, or about planning events for students and other residents, I would urge you to get involved with Interhousing Council or IHC when you're here for your first year. Um, it's a really great way to have fun um, within our housing communities. Um, there's also tons of events that we host campus-wide, um, not just in housing, but beyond. And you can find many of those events on our campus-wide app um, called What's Up Now. It's like a campus-wide calendar for fun things that you can do while you're here on campus. And then of course, if you're really passionate about leadership and you really wanna get involved um, in housing, um, consider being a resident advisor. Um, those are mostly second year students and above who already lived on campus. So if you love the experience and you wanna be a mentor for other residents here on campus, I'd really urge you to be a resident advisor or apply to be a resident advisor for your second year. They do so much for students here on campus um, and they're a great touch point. Um, so I always recommend that the first thing you do when you move in is you meet your resident advisor and say hi and introduce yourself. Um, they are students um, they have lived here for at least one year and they are a really good resource for you to ask any questions you have about life here on campus. So if you're interested in seeing inside our campus communities, normally we have housing tours that run year round. We can't offer those right now, um, but there's still some ways that you can kind of get a peek inside of our housing communities. Uh, we have a digital walking tour on the Cal Poly Now app under University Housing. So you can, if you're here on campus, feel free to take that self-guided walking tour. You can also take it from home um, and it's full of pictures and stories about all of our housing communities. Um, each residence hall and apartment community also has its own page on our website, so you can see pictures about um, inside of our residence halls. And we also have short video tours that are available on Instagram. Um, and that is our Instagram uh, handle, CP underscore housing. And then we also have a new student inf um, housing information brochure. Normally we'd have this out on open house, um, but we have it available on our website um, right now. It kind of gives you an overview of the process of the application. And I've got a little QR code that you can scan right in there in the corner if you're interested in uh, accessing the brochure on your phone. And of course, you can contact us with any questions that we have. We are available in our office as well during normal business hours, Monday through Friday. Um, we're available on Instagram um, and then our, our, um, our on, online, you can find us at housing.calpoly.edu. 
And then just give us a call as well if you just wanna to talk to some students about what it's like to live here. If you have specific questions, we are here to help you. And with that, I'm gonna pass it off to our friends over at Dining for a little more information about their programs. So let me just stop sharing. Hi everyone, my name's Kelsey. Um, I'm the Registered Dietitian and Sustainability Coordinator for Campus Dining. Um, I also wanna introduce Justin who's joining us today. Um, he'll be answering your questions in the Q&A box and he's actually a student here at Cal Poly and he can answer um, some of your questions about his experience um, dining on campus. So thank you guys again for joining us. Um, I'm gonna start off this presentation with a, a video clip so you guys can get a nice overview of what we do here at Campus Dining and then I'll go into our presentation for the day. At Cal Poly Campus Dining, we're cooking up something for everyone. With 21 venues and over a thousand menu options, you're sure to satisfy your hunger. Cal Poly is divided into four different dining neighborhoods, so you're always close to a meal, snack, or cup of coffee. In the Vista Grande neighborhood, you'll find streets featuring a rotating menu of globally inspired street food, mouthwatering comfort foods and pizza at heart, brunch when you want breakfast any time of the day, a delicious selection of international noodles and sides at Noodles. Balance Cafe for allergen-free entrees made with fresh, local ingredients to fuel your healthy lifestyle. Or indulge that sweet tooth at Sweet Bar. Pop into Market Grand Ave for a full-service deli and grab-and-go meals. Or grab a quick energy boost at Jamba. In the Kennedy Library neighborhood, there's Campus Market, a convenience store with grab-and-go and a grill a Starbucks located inside Campus Market, Julian's for coffee, pastries, and snacks, Two Taco Express for tacos and burritos when you're on the go, and Subway for sandwiches and salads. Up in Poly Canyon Village, you'll find a rotating menu featuring student favorites at Canyon Cafe, Village Market for local, sustainable products and take and heat meals, plus Einstein Brothers bagels inside Village Market. In the heart of campus, you'll find the University Union neighborhood, a perfect stop for delicious pizza and wings at Mustang Station, local fresh salads at Red Radish, quick pick-me-ups at Starbucks, and healthy options for your on-the-go lifestyle at Shake Smart. You can also catch a food truck rolling up around campus. Check out Curbside Grill and Central Coaster for a variety of palate-pleasing food options. Don't forget to skip the line with Grubhub. Order ahead from any restaurant on campus for contactless pickup. Campus Dining offers a variety of delicious options that are sustainably sourced and serve to reduce our environmental impact. We want to keep Cal Poly green. Have dietary restrictions? Our registered dietitian and her team in Vista Grande offer peer-to-peer -peer counseling, making it easier to navigate all the dining options available. In addition, you can learn all about our many programs and services available to you on our website. You can also stay in the know, subscribing to our weekly email, The Dish, and following us on social media. Thanks for taking the tour with us today. We're excited for you to join us. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I'm Kelsey, the Registered Dietitian and Sustainability Coordinator for Campus Dining. Um, I was actually a student here at um, Cal Poly back in the day as well. So I got to enjoy the beautiful campus as a student. And now that I get the chance to talk to incoming freshmen and prospective students, it's just really an honor. So again, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're gonna be talking all things campus dining. And like I said before, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the Q&A and we have a team answering those questions and we'll also take some time at the end. Um, so this is campus dining at a glance. Um, we have 23 different venues located all around campus. Um, they're really in close proximity to the various resident halls. So whether you're at the library or in your dorm room, if you're up at PCV, you're always only a quick walk away from a meal or a snack or coffee, which is the most important thing in a college student's diet. Um, we have over a thousand plus menu options, so we truly do have something for anyone, whether, you know, you follow a strict vegetarian diet, maybe you like to eat really healthy, or maybe pizza is your, you know, your staple in your diet. Um, we truly do have something for everyone. Grubhub is our official mobile ordering app, so you can utilize this to order at any dining location all over campus. 
Um, this really just makes it easy and convenient for our students who are, you know, juggling their very busy schedules. You can order dinner right before um, your class ends. You can order your Starbucks while you're walking to class. Um, so your food's ready. You can jump the line and just grab your food and go. So we offer um, three different dining plans for our students. Um, so the first year plus is probably the most common meal plan. Um, and this is for, you know, the average eater. So, you know, someone who picks this plan might have a, um, might get pancakes at balance for breakfast or maybe a breakfast burrito at brunch. Um, then there's still room for a lighter meal for their lunch. And then there's still room for a full dinner with some snacks throughout the day. So that's the most common one. And yeah, just if you consider yourself an average eater. Um, then we also have the first year club. So this is designed for someone uh, with a larger appetite. So maybe you're an athlete and you really need those three hearty meals and a consistent source of calories throughout your day. Then you might wanna go with this meal plan. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, we have the first year basic. So if you consider yourself more of a grazer, maybe you like to eat small mini meals or snacks throughout your day, um, then you might wanna go with the first year basic. Um, so whether you pick you know, the club or the basic, all of our meal plans um, run on a declining balance system. So rather than limiting you to a certain amount of swipes per day or meals, meals per day, um, you can use it just like money or just like a credit card. You can, you know, stock up on anything at any time. Um, so, you know, picking a plan, it might seem kind of stressful, um, but don't be stressed. If you aren't happy with your plan towards the end of fall quarter, you do get a chance to do a one-time switch. So you can, you know, if you have too many dining dollars or you're running low, you get to switch and that will carry over through winter and spring. So if you are a student who follows a specific diet or if you have a food allergy or medically restricted diet, I really do encourage you to start looking at our website and our menu items ahead of time. If you have any questions at all about you know, menu items or eating on campus with a specialty diet, you can reach out to me directly and I'm happy to provide you some guidance. Um, food allergies and medically restricted diets are also treated as a disability here on campus. So if you choose to come to Cal Poly or you're already coming to Cal Poly and you have a food allergy, um, make sure to register with the Disability Resource Center. Um, basically what they do is they help connect you with the various departments on campus, whether it's me in dining or someone in housing, um, and just make sh making sure that we're all working together as a collaborative group. Um, to make sure your needs are being met and that you have the access and um, access to the tools and resources that you need. Um, also, if you have a food allergy, you might or you definitely want to know about Balance Cafe, which is our allergy free kitchen. Um, so Balance Cafe is located in Vista Grande. Um, it is free of the top eight allergens plus gluten and sesame. Um, it's very much self contained. It has its own its own kitchen, it has its own um, storage unit, fridge, all its own ingredients, service area, prep area, um, to really ensure it's a safe environment for the students who need it. Um, also this year, we got our certified free from through Kitchens with Confidence to show that we are certified free of the top eight allergens plus gluten. Um, so that was really exciting. And this is just an extra step we take. So, you know, it's not just us telling you this is an allergy free kitchen. We get a third party involved to audit us and just, you know, make sure all of the policies and procedures are in place to ensure a safe environment for our students. Um, balance also, the menu rotates um, very often to give, you know, we know that students who dine here sometimes it's their go-to because it's a safe spot. So we really like to switch up the menu, um, put some fun foods in there, like the grilled cheese right now is one of my favorites, um, just to provide a variety for the students who do really rely on Balance Cafe. Um, so wellness is one of our main focuses within campus dining. Um, we really wanna ensure that students have access to healthful meals and that they're given the resources they need to eat well and be well. Um, so I'm a resource for, you know, any of the students. Um, I'm a, a service for them. I'm here to meet with the students one-on-one. -on -one. I can provide education and guidance. 
on navigating campus dining and finding foods that meet their needs. Um, we also have resources on our website. The Nutrition Calculator is one of them. Um, here you can find detailed information about all of our menu items. You can find all of the ingredients, um, nutrition facts, along with information on the different allergens. As part of our wellness um, and Choose Well program, we also have student ambassadors. So you'll be able to spot them by the green coats that they wear. Um, and you can find them on campus hosting wellness and pop-up events in various dining locations. Um, and they're just there to provide peer-to-peer -peer guidance and education on nutrition, wellness, and sustainability topics. Sustainability is also a top priority for us in campus dining. We're always looking to source sustainable and local products and implement sustainable and innovative programs. Um, we partner with local farms and we support over 50 local farms, including our Cal Poly organic farms right here on campus, along with the Cal Poly Strawberry Center. Um, so we do this to bring seasonal, fresh, and locally sourced produce directly to our students. We also participate in the Cal Poly Zero Waste Program uh, with the goal of diverting as much campus trash as possible away from landfills. Um, so each year we compost about 230 tons of pre-consumer food scraps. Um, we also have many zero waste receptacles around campus for our students to give them the opportunity to sort their waste and compost their own food scraps. Vista Grande, our, our, new, our newest dining um, center and also Village Market are also LEED certified. Um, so this means that they were built with efforts to promote material and water conservation, energy efficiency, and improved air quality. Um, also, it, it pointed out in the video, but we have a new program that we started at the beginning of this year, our reusable tumbler program. So we issue all first year students a reusable Cal Poly branded tumbler um, where they can fill up at any of our freestyle beverage um, stations. So that was an exciting new addition this year. Um, so if you're interested in staying up to date with us and, you know, staying up to date with what we're doing now and also what we're planning for next year, you can follow us on social, um, check out our website, follow us on Instagram, and we also have a weekly um, newsletter called The Dish, so you can subscribe to that as well. And finally, again, just this is our contact info. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to us um, and we're happy to help. And that is all I have for today. So I'll turn it back to Josh, but thank you all again for joining us. Thanks, Kelsey. And thanks, Julia, for the, all that uh, awesome information. Um, so we are going to open it up for a QA. and I, I do have some questions already that uh, that we can answer live. So I'll, I'll try and moderate um, you know, the, those questions. So uh, first, there's a question about what if I don't specify a roommate on my housing application? How does Cal Poly pick a roommate for me? So um, I'll put, put that one out there for, for a live response. Yeah, I can answer that question. Um, so you're not required to choose a roommate at all. Um, many of our students do not request roommates and just want to be matched with a random roommate. Uh, we don't have roommate surveys um, at Cal Poly. Instead, uh, we match people based off of the preferences they list in the application. That's so primarily um, your residential learning community. So we can still match you up with somebody who um, has the same academic focus or interest or background. Awesome. And I think that also there was another one in here. Um, Oh, are we able to specify a preference for a double over a triple room? Um, we make the assumption that most folks are hoping for a double room. That said, um, you can't specifically request a double room. Instead, you can um, request a lower, co lower cost housing option in the application. That would be uh, triple rooms um, or quad rooms if they're offered next year. Um, but you can't specifically request a double. And um, some of our housing communities or some of our residential uh, learning communities um, have different room types in them. So for example, um, North Mountain, any residential learning community place there only has triples um, on a normal year. So we don't allow folks to just tell us they only want to be placed in a double because they could be placed in a triple as well. Um, it just kind of depends on the residential learning community and also the availability of spaces. Um, sometimes our double rooms are popular so they can fill. And then going back to the, the roommates, there's a question here. Can we pick more than one roommate? At the moment, uh, you can only pick one roommate if you are um, an incoming first year students 
um, transfer students uh, live in campus apartments, so they would have the opportunity to pick um, up to uh, three other roommates in their application if that's um, what they uh, if they if they have three other people that they would like to request. Uh, but right now we're limiting it to just one other roommate. Um, uh, just uh, just in case uh, we have any limitations uh, for COVID for for next um, academic year, we'd hate to be in a position where we offered folks uh, three person roommate groups and had to break them up at the last minute because of public health uh, guidelines. So it's just one other request right now, although that could change in the future, depending on um, fall and and when we hear from um, when you hear about decisions for, for housing for fall. Okay, let's see here. Thank you for that. Looks like we're all responding to these other questions, but let's see. I think we've already answered. Can you choose if you want a double or a triple? Let's see. Can students request a single room? You cannot request a single room as a first year student. As I um, noted earlier, transfer students and continuing students who live in our campus apartments are mostly placed in private rooms um, for campus apartments because that's how they're set up. Um, but you can't specifically request a, a private room in a residence hall. Um, there are some um, exceptions that are made for, for any disability or medical related needs. Uh, and you would go through um, the DRC here on campus, a disability resource center. And if you do have um, a disability related need for a private room, um, you would just work with your access specialist um, through the DRC. And um, they kind of take each case individually, student by student, and they let university housing know. Um, if this, if they if they should have an accommodation for a single room here on campus as a first year. Here's one for campus dining. Um, what if we don't use all our food credits? Do we get money back for what we don't use? Yeah, so your um, meal plan will roll over quarter to quarter. So if you don't get through it all fall quarter, you still have the rest of the um, year to use that up. Um, and then at the end of the year, if you choose to um, purchase one of our community dining memberships for the following year, all any leftovers from that first year will roll over as well. Um, and those community plans start as low as 250. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and people are wondering, does the dining application after you accept also? So I know the housing application is open on April 8th. Is the dining application open at that time as well? Um, I believe so. Yes, it opens with housing. They're usually linked together, so it's a pretty easy process uh, where you finish your application and then it jumps you right over to, um, to the dining. Thank you. And then we have one. How do you pronounce Yaki Tutu? And I think I think I got it right, but. <laughs> <laughs> community in the Yaki Tutu Yaki language. Uh, so it's Yaki Tutu. Okay, hey, let's see. Um, we had a question in here about, let me find it. Um, well, first of all, you already talked about this, Julia, but if you can, if you can reiterate, the question is, can you repeat, um, is the assumption there will be only, only be double occupancy next year due to COVID-19, or is this undecided? Um, it's, we're, we're really optimistic that we're going to have um, doubles and triples potentially in some of the larger rooms. Um, it's not, it's not decided. Um, unfortunately, there's no COVID crystal ball. So uh, we do some planning um, and we make kind of our best plans uh, for the future, but it's all very much determined on public health conditions at the time. Um, so as we get nearer to fall and we see how the vaccine continues to roll out, um, the campus is gonna continue to make decisions about um, housing uh, and occupancy levels for fall and also course delivery for fall. Um, but we're very optimistic that we'll be able to get back to as close to normal as possible with public health conditions next year. And then um, sort of a follow up, but I know we talked about the, the um, two year housing requirement for, for certain colleges, mm -hmm. um, but there's a question here that sort of plays into that. Do we need to apply for housing each year? Yes, you do need to apply for housing each year. Um, that just gives us, um, there's, I mean, it's not just like application isn't just uh, to let us know that you wanna live here, but it also lets us know your preferences year to year. Um, so you do apply for housing every single year. Let's see here. So this might be one. Um, so do students live on campus after their first year or do they tend to live in apartments off campus or Greek housing or so? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a mix. Um, certainly with a two-year housing requirement, we have a good chunk of students who are required to live on campus their second year. And um, there are more and more of those students as well. Um, and then we have a limited number of spaces for students that do not have a two-year housing requirement. Um, but we do have students who choose to stay with us their second year um, without the requirement and their third year, sometimes their fourth year. Um, and they just sign up early when we have spaces uh, and, and get a spot on campus. But we've, it's, it's just kind of based off of your preference. There are many, many students who live just off campus um, in apartment communities that are really geared towards students just off of uh, our campus core um, and then all throughout Slow County. So uh, it's kind of up to you and your particular academic situation, your two-year housing requirement and what you're looking for in terms of a, um, a housing experience. And this is one that's kind of actually both for housing and or dining. And it may be more a question for financial aid, but how does the dining and housing deposit work with financial aid? I don't know if you guys can speak to that process at all. Yeah, the, the initial payment, was that the question? It's the, the housing and dining deposit. How does it work with, with financial aid? Yeah, um, so when you sign up in the application, there's an initial payment. It's $500 for um, transfer students and then $1,500 for first year students. That's um, $500 for housing and $1,000 for dining. Um, that goes towards your first uh, your first month of fees. So it comes out of your overall cost. So it's an initial payment that is then applied toward your, towards your housing cost in the fall, um, if you're here in the fall. Um, for some folks, um, the financial aid office determines if some folks have enough financial aid um, that would be applied for the academic year later on. And they code those students um, into our application. So if you have, you could get a waiver from financial aid automatically based off of your financial aid package in your um, financial situation. And then the application just skips over that step automatically. If you are one of those students who has a waiver from financial aid for, for the initial payment. Okay. I see this one here, a couple out here in the question, in the, in the Q and A, um, is there a vaccine requirement to, to live in on campus housing? And I'm not sure they weren't specific if we're talking about general vaccinations or potentially a COVID vaccination. As I understand it, Nona, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, there is no uh, requirement for vaccines, uh, for the COVID-19 vaccine, although it's highly encouraged. Yeah, and, and that's correct um, as of now. And um, as well, it, the reason for that, I think is because it's an, an emergency use vaccine. So um, that's correct information. One thing um, to note is that we have a pretty rigorous testing program happening on campus. Now it's been in place since fall and it's been adjusted and ramped up um, as we learn more and, and have um, more testing options available to us. And so um, uh, what we're hearing is that, uh, testing could likely continue in the fall. Um, you know, in the event that, um, you know, the public health um, situation is, uh, you know, still with us, which is highly likely. Um, but um, if students, faculty or staff decide not to get vaccinated, then the testing would be important to keep in place as well. Um, if someone falls ill who's been vaccinated, you know, we would we would want to be able to protect um, our community. And so we would have testing in place for that as also. Yeah, this year our residents are tested every few days on campus. Yeah, and we have um, isolation housing and then we have a quarantine area and then quarantine in place and it's gone really well. Um, and we've been able to remain open all year and um, um, Cal Poly faculty and students actually have a saliva testing um, now that we're running in, um, in the College of Science and Math. So um, that's really cutting edge for us and, and we're proud of our students and faculty for developing that. Thank you. Um, so there are several questions actually out here about do I get to choose which dorms I want to live in or how, how um, there are a couple about how do I uh, request living in Yaki Tutu? Um, the, short, the short answer is you can't, uh, unfortunately. So um, 
at Cal Poly, we, we don't request any buildings. You don't request any residence halls um, or even apartments uh, by community. Instead, you request residential learning communities. Uh, we really, really want to place you um, with other folks who share the same you know, academic interest, focus. Um, so you have programming and, um, and study buddies that are kind of built in to, to your situation. Um, so you request a residential learning community. You can't specifically request a building. Um, and residential learning community locations aren't finalized um, until the summer when all the applications come in, then we can see how many students are requesting those communities and then what the best needs for the programs are. And then we place those communities um, in specific buildings or specific residence halls. Um, so residential learning communities can change locations from year to year. Um, so it's a good thing to note if you're trying to figure out where residential learning communities have been placed in order to, re to request those in your application, just know that they, they can change locations uh, every single year. Um, let's see. I've seen this one out here uh, several times too. For, for first years um, in the residence halls, are all the, the bathrooms communal bathrooms? Um, yes. Um, most of the restrooms are shared by a floor. Um, in first year residence halls. So your floor, your wing um, usually has a communal bathroom that's in the center that all of our residents use um, for the floor of the wing. And the only difference is North Mountain. Um, North Mountain is kind of semi-suite style housing. So we have four rooms that are connected in the center with um, a restroom in the center. So there are four rooms that share um, a common restroom in the center. So it's a little bit lower um, in terms of the number of folks who are sharing that particular, it's more of like a pod and all the pod shares that particular restroom. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see. So I, I'm not sure if we've specified yet, but there is a question about when move-in day is and um, what do students do between moving in and the first day of classes? That's a great question. Mustang move-in dates aren't finalized yet, although they are um, after Labor Day typically, um, and our first years move in first, um, so they can participate in all of our orientation um, programs uh, here on campus. So you have you move in, and then right after that, you're really thrown into a ton of great. Um, activities and meetups uh, and things that you can kind of experience together with your class or your cohort. Um, and it's really just about exploring Cal Poly. Um, hey, Vincent, are you, Vincent, what did you do uh, your first week as a first year? Oh, Vincent, you are muted. Sorry, I was answering a question on the Q and A, um, but I had a proper week of welcome and our WOW lead leaders who are like our orientation leaders took us on um, tours of the campus. They took us to all our classes the first week. And then we ended up going to like Morro Bay one day. I was in the ag um, wow group. So we also went to like tractor supply and then we went to the dairy on campus. Um, but your wow leaders also take you to these other events that are there for um, diversity inclusivity events too. So um, you kind of have this little group of people that you get to know in your uh, living hall. And there's just a lot of exploring that students do. There's a lot of hiking that happens. Um, and um, you just get to know not just campus, but Slow County um, and, and San Luis Obispo um, a little bit more. Um, so this one goes back to the, the dorms in general. There are a couple of people asking in the Q&A about whether the dorms are co-ed um, and are roommates based on gender. Um, yeah, we default towards um, same gender rooms, although you can request a gender inclusive room in your application if you'd like to live with someone um, who has a, a, identified with a different gender than you do. Um, so, but most of uh, the vast majority of our rooms are, are gender specific. Um, and then um, depending on the residence hall style, um, you may have gender inclusive restrooms or gender specific restrooms. Yaki Tutu is all gender inclusive restrooms. Um, and um, yeah, so everybody shares the, the restroom. And uh, for transfer students, since housing is not guaranteed on campus, when will we find out if we're approved for a room? So for transfer students, um, we just keep the application open until spaces fill. Um, so once we fill for our, the number of spaces that we have on campus, um, for transfer students, then we open up an interest list. Um, so if you get your name in beforehand, 
and you complete the application, then you've secured a space on campus and we're planning on you have, um, living it here for fall. Um, and then you, if not, if the application closes, you can add your name to the interest list afterwards. And then we offer spaces to folks on the interest list as they become available. So we'll work that interest list throughout the rest of the academic year and all throughout the summer. Um, so there are a number of questions in, um, in the chat about, how people might be able to find roommates. So if there's you know, Facebook groups out there, or this one is, is there a community share board um, or common place online where we can look to find a roommate um, where we have to already know someone going to Cal Poly? That would be a really good question for a student. Um, I can take this one, Julia. So I'm pretty sure there's a Facebook page for the Cal Poly students. I know for a fact there's an Instagram page. It's like Cal Poly 2025 or whatever the incoming class is. So if you go on there, you can see a lot of people have posted like photos of themselves and like a brief description. So you can kind of link up with people on there um, and find a roommate that way. Yeah, and uh, actually in the chat, someone just posted the link to the um, Cal Poly class of 2025. Thanks, Javon. Um, and then um, I know you talked about Wi-Fi, uh, but there's a question about whether there is also a wired connection in the rooms, Ethernet. Yes, I believe so. I'm pretty, Vincent, you, you're, you're in a room. There's, there's a wired internet connection, isn't there? Correct, yeah, there's a wi uh, wired internet connection in all the rooms. Yeah, um, and most of our folks use Wi-Fi. Um, we actually have two different networks. Uh, one is for general use and one is for like internet of things. Um, so any device that you connect to the internet goes on a different network. Um, so you can game without draining any resources from folks who are studying. Okay, a couple. Um, when are housing payments due? The initial payment is due in the application. So um, if it's your, your first year student, it's $1,500, um, $500 for housing, $1,000 for dining. If you're a transfer student, it's just $500 for housing because um, dining is optional. Um, so that is due as you fill out the application unless you have a waiver from the financial aid office. And then um, the housing payments um, are due um, we have a couple of different ways to, to pay them. The uh, housing payments are posted to your student account um, after you get your housing assignment, and they're typically due September 1st. Um, your, first, uh, your first payment is usually due September 1st. And then you can choose to cho uh, pay in full. You can uh, pay quarterly or you can pay monthly. Okay. Um, so this was asked a couple different ways also. Um, what happens if you get to campus and you don't feel like you can continue living with your roommates? Um, I think something that, that uh, we're, we're all familiar with if you've ever lived in, in a dorm situation. Yeah. Um, I, first of all, the one roommate tip that I always have for folks who are moving in um, is sit down with your roommates day one and just talk about like, what are the house rules for this space? Obviously, university housing has its own rules, but it's not going to cover things like... Um, like some of the individual quirks of living with other folks um, in an apartment or wherever you're placed. So sit down with your roommates and have a frank discussion um, about like, what are our house rules for this particular space? You know, what, what can we all agree to? Um, and set it all down, you know, like talk about what, what is allowable, what everybody is comfortable with um, and write up your own house rules uh, or a roommate agreement as we call it here on campus um, and have everybody, you know, know it, agree to it um, and talk to your RA about it as well. Um, and then you have those rules set in place. Um, so I think that's like the best tip um, for when you're moving in is just to have that roommate agreement, to have those conversations with your, your roommates about what you're comfortable with and ask them what they're comfortable with. So I think that kind of heads off a lot of conflict that roommates typically have uh, when they don't communicate expectations to each other. Um, so that's tip one for me. Um, tip two is talk to your resident advisor, talk to your coordinator of student development. Um, coordinated student development is live-in staff, um, and they are kind of captains of the community. I um, mean, you can go to them with any questions or conflicts that you have, as well as your, your RAs, and they can help you mediate things out and come to agreements with your roommates. And then if um, it's just not working out between you and your roommates, um, as long as public health conditions allow for it, um, you can request a room trade. Um, we've had to pause room trades right now because of the pandemic, but on a normal year, we offer room trades um, as just part of our normal process. Um, you can request a room change and tell us what room type you are looking for. Um, and then we 
go onto that list and try to find a space that matches what you're requesting on campus. Um, and the more loose you are about what rooms types that you are hoping for, um, the more likely it is we'll find you a match for an open room on campus. Awesome. So we have about six minutes left. So we have time for a couple more questions. Um, this is one I know uh, that comes up. Can first years bring a vehicle? Not normally. <laughs> Um, this year they can because we have limited occupancy here on campus, but um, we have fewer students here on campus, so we've got plenty of parking. Um, but on a normal year, um, first years um, cannot bring a car on campus, um, and then second years and transfer students can. Um, but the good news is that our first year students and, and I'll, call, I'll call poly students, um, they have their poly card gets them onto city buses. Um, so it's really easy to get around San Luis Obispo. And this is also a very bike friendly campus and a very bike friendly community. So lots of folks um, are using bikes to kind of navigate around campus. Um, this is a good one. Do transfer apartments have things like vacuum cleaners, et cetera? You bet. <laughs> uh, transfer apartments have vacuum cleaners. In fact, all of our communities have access to vacuum cleaners as well. So you don't need to bring that with you. Although if you want to bring like a little dust buster or something, that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, most, most of the like mainstays that you need um, are already here. Um, so yes, every apartment does come with its own vacuum. Um, and, um, and we also like things like toilet paper as well. Um, so you can get those from the front desk um, or if, if uh, the custodial um, team comes in and cleans, they'll replace things like toilet paper. So I've got one that I'm going to answer here. Uh, the question is, if I join late, where can I find the recorded meeting? So uh, just to kind of let everyone know, uh, a recording of this meeting will actually be posted on the Cal Poly Admissions YouTube uh, page, um, likely uh, at some point tomorrow. Um, so just, just kind of a, a heads up there. Um, let's see here. Maybe time for one or two more questions. Uh, can I request a roommate with similar dietary restrictions? That might be a, a question for both. Um, how's it done? <laughs> I believe that would be processed through the DRC. Julia, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, um, we don't have a lot of your medical information. In fact, we, uh, housing doesn't have any medical information. Um, and um, so, but people who have similar dietary restrictions often find each other. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, there are many folks who um, who are grouped, like find themselves each other, request each other because um, they like they know their roommate has similar dietary restrictions as they do, or would be very respectful of their dietary restrictions uh, and allowances. Um, so oftentimes those folks find each other, and then um, yeah, if you go through the DRC um, and have a special accommodation, for example. Um, for a private room based off of a dietary restriction or a dietary allergy in an apartment. Um, oftentimes, um, those folks are grouped together uh, in our first year housing if there are any folks who are in apartments because of dietary restrictions or, um, al or allergies. Let's see here. We have time, I think, for maybe one more. Um... Lots of good questions. And I do want to highlight, actually, I'll take this moment. You know, we're, we're not going to be able to get to all the questions that are out there in the Q&A. So I, I definitely want to um, encourage everyone to reach out a few questions. If you didn't get your questions answered, um, you know, I know both Kelsey and, and Julia provided contact information for, for both housing and dining. Um, I also see some questions out there um, regarding orientation and things like that. So um, I would also recommend, I'm going to put out there that you can definitely contact the admissions office if you have any questions about timing of, you know, accepting your offer of admission or any questions about that process. Um, so um, Javon, if you would be so kind as to put our, our uh, link to the, the contact um, information for admissions out there, that'd be great. Um, as I look through here and see, we've talked about that a little bit. Um, just one more time, actually, to, to kind of close things out. Um, We've got a lot of questions and I know we answered it earlier, but is housing determined by the date of submission um, or, you know, and, and I, you know, or, or is it uh, ongoing? Um, no, it's not first come first serve. Um, we want to, we don't want to disadvantage anyone who is kind of committing a little later, later on. Um, so it's not first come first serve. You can get your name in in April 8th or you can get your name in on May 6th. Um, and you can still get your preferences in there. Um, and then uh, everything is kind of randomly assigned based off of um, the application after that. 
Um, but no, so it's, it, you don't, there's no rush to get your name in at like 12.01 on April 8th. Um, sleep in <laughs> on April 8th, you can apply on April 9th, you can apply on, on um, in early May and it's, it's all the same. Uh, we kind of, we, we don't, um, we start assigning later on. And then last but not least, um, before we all, all say goodbye for the evening, um, question about what information should we have ready when the housing form opens up? So I don't know if you guys have any um, helpful tips and tricks to, to, to close with. Um, I would do some research on the residential learning communities and know which ones you want to request. Um, that's kind of the big piece for us. So yeah, um, just have an idea about your top two residential learning communities. And then if you have any roommates, just make sure that you talk to them about their residential learning community preferences as well. We want those, those preferences in your application to match um, so we can place you together. So make sure you talk to them as well so you can have all of your preferences matched, matched in your application. Awesome. Well, um, that, that's going to take up our, a lot of time for this evening. But first of all, I want to say thank you to, to both Kelsey and Julia, as well as all of our, um, all of our helpers tonight. Um, and thank you for tuning in. Um, like I said, if you have any further questions or there's anything that, that we didn't get to tonight, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we are here to help and uh, here to answer all your questions. So um, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed tonight's presentation and, and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing everyone on, on campus in the fall. Hey there, my name is Rafael. I'm a fourth year journalism transfer student with a minor in Spanish and my pronouns are he, him, his. Thank you for watching the video. Please share any questions or comments you have down below in the comment section and go ahead and click here to subscribe and to watch more videos, click here. If you want to sign up for a virtual visit or talk to any student or staff members, check out our website. Link in the description. Thank you for watching.